to black mystery. That is our story, that is the untold story, which is a mystery. So again, I welcome you to Oasis Spiritual Center for Divine Living. If you want to know more about the ministry, you can go to the website there, www.oasisspiritualcenter.com. If you are tuned in on the YouTube channel, you can go down to the description or up into the banner and you can click the link there and it'll take you right there. Hope you won't do it right now while we're in the midst of the class. Today's session is part of the series on the comedic genesis of Christianity. And yes, I did not make a mistake. I'm talking about the African influence, the uh, template from which Christianity has come forth. Comedic Genesis, Genesis means beginning. So we're looking at the Nile Valley influence on Christianity. So welcome to the 2022 Black Mystery Scissors series. Today's lesson is entitled The Creation Story. So I'm just gonna kind of introduce you to some things. I'm gonna go into some, but it's gonna be an overlay or overview. This can be like 101, this introductory class. Each thing that I talk about can be dived into deeper into a lesson all by themselves. So I wanna warn you all. First, I wanna say what I say tonight and through this series is not meant to bash anybody's belief. Your beliefs are yours. Now, all beliefs are not truths. Your beliefs may be your truth, but it's not steeped in universal truth. So as we mature, as we move into a desire to be transformed into divine spiritual beings, we must take it upon ourselves to do a deeper dive into what we believe. Usually when a person can't exp explain what it is they believe or, or have faith in, they'll lean into, well, that's what I believe or those are my beliefs. And the thing about that, they are your beliefs. I'll allow people to have their beliefs. But in this class tonight, I am laying out something that may rub up against what you believe. Take it with a grain of salt, take it into deeper study, prove it as wrong, and so it is. In this series, in any of my teaching environments, I do not allow attacking. Attacking. If you post something that appears to be attacking someone, belittling someone, I will then delete you from the live feed and also make it where you will not be able to get into any trainings that has to do with anything I'm doing. Um, what I teach will call cognitive dissonance and even religious, religious or faith dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is when you have a thought or something that is, goes against what you feel, goes against what you think you know, and you have a level of cognitive dissonance. Many individuals who embark upon the journey of um, unpacking Christianity and going back to the Nile Valley civilization come across so much information and so, so many truths that have been tampered with and they go through a season of cogn cognitive dissonance where they know what they've been taught is wrong but you can't let it go. And a lot of times you can't let it go because of what you've been taught to believe particularly in Christianity with heaven and hell, the, the hell um, part of the equation has been taught so strongly and ingrained that it takes a long time to move away from, am I doing something that's gonna cause me to spend eternity in hell? This is not the class, but that's a whole nother class. Hell is not is something that was created. It is not a spiritual concept. It is a concept that has been put in place to control individuals. That's, that's what religious, religion is all about, tying you to something. Also, oh, so tonight I want to expose you to another level of comedic spirituality. For, let me make a disclaimer first. Um, and the disclaimer is that I don't know all there is to know about comedic science. I've been studying it for 30 years, but I wasn't studying it intentionally or at the level that I needed to be studying it at. 
anything you study in a hidden way is not going to unfold itself to you uh, because the universe feels as though if you can't embrace it and receive it, then you don't really need it. You're not ready for it. So it took about 30 years for me to get to the place where I am now, where I can be comfortable to talk about it, to explore it, um, to evaluate it up against what I thought I knew. And that's something you're gonna go through. Um, some of you may say it's too much and you just don't revisit it. Just because we don't pay attention to something doesn't mean that it's not in existence, but I understand that. So tonight's class, I wanna cover four things and then as a bonus, fifth one. Tonight, I'm gonna cover what is cosmology, um, the three creation stories. We're gonna look at the first Trinity concept. I'm gonna look at the eight aspects or char characteristics of the creator inside of the, cos in, inside of the comedic expression of the creation story. And lastly, we're gonna look at the Ankh and a hidden meaning behind what the Ankh represents. So those of you who are in the Zoom room, you can feel free to um, drop questions or make comments uh, and I will address them. Those of you who are on Facebook Live, once the presentation is over, I'll be able to go, come back in, not Facebook Live, the YouTube channel, I'll be able to come back in and go through the feed and see if there's anything I need, need to address. I was gonna to address tonight, but I don't think I'll get to it because within the time constraints that I have, um, I don't believe I'll get to Amen over here to your right. Um, you see Amen, I, I'll just address a little bit about it right now. You see Amen, but if you pay close attention, um, Amen has some female characteristics to it. Um, and I call it the it because we put Amen, the name on it to try to describe the characteristics of it. And so we see here the image of Amen and Amenet. Amen and Amenet. The, and we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk a little bit more about them when we go into talking about the eight aspects or characteristics of the creator. Uh, but this image here you'll see oftentimes and you, someone will say that it's Amen, but it's, it represents the two being one, the, the divine feminine and the divine masculine um, in one physical form, but the form is attempting to capture the essence of the hidden thing. And so we have to look at the images to see what they're saying to us. And the one thing about um, the images, just as, as in the Medonetta, often called the hieroglyphics, um, they are picture, picture drawings, images, because the commissions, the ancient Nile Valley civilization knew that, there, that a picture or an image was worth a thousand words. And they had many images to depict an aspect. That's why the word says, thou shall not have any graven image. That is, you shouldn't have one image that you worship as the totality of source, God, divine intelligence, because it's, in, it's, a, it's a spiritual, it's an invisible, it's an energy. It oftentimes is manifested as matter um, and the matter is only an aspect, just like the sun is an aspect. It is not um, all of source or God as the, European. Now, when you hear me use the word Egyptologist, I'm talking about those who study um, the comedic um, science from the European Eurocentric perspective. When I say chemitologist, is those who have come to the realization that the Egyptologists, um, and oftentimes, were looking at the comedic worldview from the European worldview and they can't really truly interpret it. So that's a, a freebie, okay? Um, a couple of things, okay, there yeah, we, we just move right along. Let's start by looking at um, what is cosmology, um, the cosmos. 
uh, cosmology in its simplest form is the science or origin of the development of the universe. Uh, modern astronomy is dominated by the Big Bang Theory. So many people say that the beginning of the world started with the Big Bang Theory, which brings together um, uh, when we when we when we begin to explore the possibility of the Big Bang as being something that potentially did happen, and then understanding the uh, cosmology of the Commission or the Nile Valley Civilization, it all makes sense. Um, one of the books that I'm going to refer you to is called Spirituality Before Religions by Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kameen. And at the end of tonight's presentation, I'll have it on the screen for you to see. Um, he also says spirituality is unseen science and science is seen spirituality. I like that. Spirituality is unseen science and science is seen spirituality. Um, this book is uh, that he has put together is a book I recommend for anyone who is starting out on a journey uh, because it, for 30 years I have read so many books and first had to become familiar with who was writing from what perspective, what were they trying to protect to finally the information has been so poured out um, thanks to our Dr. Benz, our Dr. Henry Clarks, our Van, Dr. Van Sertimas, all those individuals who uh, were the pioneers and were the laughing stock early on in the late 60s and 70s when they were uh, advocating and writing and putting their books out. But today it's, it's commonplace to have their material footnoted, even by some of the Egyptologists. All right, so let me move this over here. All right, so we're gonna start. So cosmos, cosmology is basically um, the study of the origins or, or the story that someone would tell of what they believe a theory of the beginning of time. So there's three creation stories that we're gonna just, I'm not gonna get into all three tonight. I'm going to deal with one of the three in particular, one for the sake of time and two, because it's the, it's the most uh, ancient or an, it goes farthest back into antiquity. And so I wanted to use that one. And it's interesting when I look for an image to find, um, creation, it's, it's funny that the first image that's popped up on my screen when I was doing a search was this image to the, to, to the right there where you see the, the Africa, the imprint of Africa and the majority of Africa being, have been um, painted out, out being created. Um, and that's interesting that it uses a paintbrush to say that it's a bit like the art, the work of an artist, because that's a great analogy because you create the world in which you live. And so when you understand the cosmology of the commissions of the Nile Valley civilizations, you will find the reason why I use Nile Valley civilizations because uh, it didn't all start in Kemet. It didn't all start in Egypt as the, the geographical area we call it Egypt. But if you go up, this, up, the, up the south on the Nile, south being north, when you orient it to Africa, north is south. When you orient it to um, the, the um, Northern hemisphere, north is north. And so for the Africans, they, their true orientation was to the south. So that's interesting. If you look in south, um, which would be looking north, to your left would be the rising of the sun and to your right would be the setting of the sun. Um, east would be on your right side and um, no, east, east. East would be on your left side where the sun comes up and on your right side down, that's when you orient it to the south. Um, keep that in mind because I'm gonna at some point come back around to that, not tonight, but when we talk about left and right hemispheres and all of those kinds of things. So we're gonna look at three, there's three creation stories. There's the Hermopolitan, Her Her which these are all Greek names and we're gonna eventually learn be exposed to the comedic names, Herm Hermopolitan, Memphis, and the Heliopolitan. 
um, the city of the sun. Um, so these are the three primary creation stories. We're gonna look at the Mythite or the Mythos creation story um, tonight to help you kind of see that the creation story that we have today and through those of us who are Christians who are all follow the Christian pathway or have been brought up inside of that, we're gonna make sense out of Genesis chapter one for you and Genesis chapter two for the most part. And I'm not gonna revisit it in depth, but you'll begin to see how um, or see where we get our Genesis story from. Now, you need to know that um, the first five books of the Bible is attributed to Moses anyway, um, because of the first five books of the Bible are called the books of the Torah, the books of the law, the books that pertains to the Judaism from which we get Christi um, Catholicism and Christianity. They all intertwine. And not only do Catholicism and Christianity use the Bible as a reference, but also we need to know that Islam uses the Bible as a reference. And now it's really interesting that all, the, all these major religions just use the Bible as a reference and then they have their own special, like Catholicism has the Catholic Bible, Judaism has the Torah, Islam has the Quran, but we left, we are left holding that the Christians have the New Testament, but there is a book that predates all of them and um, it's written on the walls. Um, and it's written in, in the, the in text that they like the uh, coming forth by day or the Egyptian book, or they call it the uh, um, the book of the dead. What we, we learn is to come forth by day. So in all of these books, it has a story that talks about creation. And then there's some people will say that there's a Babylonian creation story. Uh, I'm, I'm dealing with the most um, the oldest civilizations antiquity comes out of Africa. And then we, we spread throughout the world. Um, so I'm, I'm taking it back to its beginning. Um, and we gotta stop um, watering down who we are and where we've come from and what we have experienced. Everybody embraces our history, but to us, it's a mystery. You gotta make the mystery my story. So we're gonna look at the Memphite story for the most part. So uh, when we look at the Memphite story, we find the first trinity um, in, in expression. I got my slides out of order. I'm gonna go forward one. Okay, the first trinity. Now we know the trinity talks about three. When you read in the creation story uh, in Genesis, it tells us that there was in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and darkness covered and there was water. Now, this is interesting because this individual who you see here is rep represents two people, uh, Nun and Nunet. It represents nothing and it represents something. And so it represents zero field. The field, we talk about quantum uh, physics today, um, quantum theory, it all comes from this whole concept. Um, you see, even though I say, who is this dude? It's, this is not just a dude. This is um, a male and female it, because this is a spirit. It's the divine masculine and the divine feminine. If you look here, you see that there's a, a, a beard. Okay, and then if you look here, you see there's a image of a breast uh, right there. So this is a uh, uh, what some I think some may call an amorphodite, but it's not an amorphodite because this is not a physical form. This is a spiritual image that is depicting um, a story to us. Now, are these in the images real? No, just like when we read the Bible, we say that um, the places weren't real places in many cases, or, or, or we'll say that the individuals, none of the people really existed um, because it's a real, it's a story, it's an allegory, it's a, um, it, it's, 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 it's a myth, okay? When we, uh, myth, when you look at myth is mind theology. Uh, and so we have to begin to open ourselves up to understand what we think we understand we had to open ourselves up to overstand it. 
and then to get to the point where it's an understanding. So when you look at the creation story, the original creation story, it starts with, in, in Memphite, the Memphite creation story was found on a Shabaka stone, and the Shabaka stone was um, a stone that was, um, it was this, the, the, the Memphite, not the Memphite, but the creation story was in, uh, carved on it. Um, I'm not going to go into the deepness of that, but it was carved on it. It was originally found and it was um, papyri that was kind of molded um, by um, the, the, who they call the pharaoh, but they didn't have pharaohs. Um, it was, um, the, uh, the word for pharaoh is the uh, suit uh, Biti. The Nusut Biti, Shabaka found it and he had it engraved onto a stone. And so that's why we have the, the Memphite creation story is the oldest. Now you read some, um, Egypt, some Egyptian writings and they'll say that um, the, uh, the, the one of the other two are, but the most recent finds are saying that this is the oldest creation story, the, this Memphite story. So it starts with, um, Three things happen. First, it says uh, the nun, 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 and nunet. Okay, the eternal waters of immortality. In the very beginning, before all the fundamental elements, before creative intelligence, there was only the nun. Okay, an eternal presence of matter, water, and hydrogen. So the commissions, the now Valley civilization understood science at a whole nother level. That's why they were able to build superstructures such as the, what we call the, the pyramids uh, and all of the, the Sphinx or, and all the other things that they built that we today cannot replicate because they understand, understood um, science from a spiritual perspective. And it goes on, it says, none was the immeasurable matter. None was the one place where many would emerge as the element that would form the cosmic universe, the immortal totality of noble consciousness. The con cosmic universe was created by what comes out of the uncreated creation. The nun has no beginning and has no end. Where have we heard that at? We say God has no beginning, God has no ending. So when we use this term God, it's generic. Actually the term God is hiding because what it does, it, 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 it has taken true from others and glossed over by giving it a generic name such as God. That's why I use it because there's different manifestations to it, which we, we are learning tonight. None has no beginning and it has no end. The none created space, geography, time, History without directly participating in any of the created acts. So this is talking about the first aspect of, of, of what we call God was manifested as Nun and Nunet. Nun was the original seed of thought and command. The Nun was the seed of our concept of what was, is, and will forever be. So Nun. So creation starts with the acknowledgement of none and none at. Before the cosmos ever came into being, before there was a planet made, before there were stars thrown into the sky, before any of the things manifested in what we historically say in the six days, none was in existence. None was neither creator nor nothingness. But even though we may say it's the creator, but it's not the creator. It's the essence behind all creation. The nun was primordial, absolute, and eternal in the depths of where matter had already existed. So everything is, that's why I call it the nun, the word nun, N-O-N-E, comes from the N-U-N, the nun and the nunette, where nothing exists that is seen, but it yet exists in the unseen realm. So that's, that's important. This is where we get to zero feel. This is where we want to get back to when we go into meditation, to the place where 
the, the place before form, okay? So that's the first thing that, that came forth. You had uh, none um, was like existing, just brooding out there. And then there was a divine idea that came forth. It, next you have, we're talking about the first trinity here. Let me back up. So next you would have, so first you have none, and then you have the next um, netter, uh, netter or, or the next manifest, uh, physical manifestation of the unseen is seen in pata, okay? Um, P-T-A-H, okay? Pata is represented by a primordial heel. So if you're reading the higher, the meta netter, the glyphs, you will see anytime there is a heel being depicted, a mound being de depicted, it's talking about pata. Pata is the energy of conversion. It also is the spirit of creation. So it's it's the the it's the unknown moving itself into the known, into the process. The existence of the spiritual is complemented by the existence of matter. So spirit and matter are complements. Spirit comes before matter, okay? And all matter dissipates back to spirit or energy. Spirit is pure energy and matter is energy's physical manifestation or physical form, okay? So we see here in this creation story, uh, when the inert mass of primordial matter felt the desire of the primordial spirit, it began to move and the life system, which were to constitute the future world, was initiated. Things began to happen. The second aspect of creation was pata. The first aspect of creation was nun, nunet. Okay, so, the, so that's the, the first aspect. And the second aspect of creation is pata, which converts the energy. Noon is the energy at rest, is being converted by pata or potential energy, is that which was at rest within noon into energy in motion or kinetic energy. Now, you're gonna, when you get this book, you're gonna find that it's gonna be really helpful in, in helping you not just see the images, but know what they are depicting. So the divine essence, pata, that is energy conversion, is the pure form that is the cause of the movement of matter. So none was not moving. Pata is the movement of the, of the energy in motion. All of this is going to make sense as you begin to get deeper into um, metaphysics, into spiritual thought and not religious thought. He says in his book that um, the divine essence, Pata, is the pure form that is the cause of movement, matter, and cosmos process of becoming. The world is becoming. The, the things are being formed. Pata's divine purpose is to make the essence or the netaru, the essences. The, when we talk about the images that we're going to talk about and that oftentimes is misconstrued as gods, they're not gods. They're essences just like you had in the old testament they had the essenes these were individuals who understood stood the spiritual science so they're called neturu okay or the natures okay a netter is singular neturu is plural means more than one okay and they so the 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 divine pata's divine purpose is to make the netters go from potential to actuality, energy at rest, to energy in motion. Everything is about energy. The whole, you are an energy being. The moment you lay your earth suit down, when we say we're dead, it's because the energy, the spirit has left the ka, has left your body. So you have first part of the Trinity is the noon, nunet. And then we have the second part here is pata, Okay, which is the um, energy in motion. And then the third one we have is here we see to the very far right is a tomb. Okay, now, so that's, that's the first trinity. The first trinity there is, is noon, bata, and a tomb, atom, where we get the word atom from. Um, 
the self-created intelligent word. So when the Bible says we created in his image after his likeness, it's all three of these aspects to tell us what we, of our potential. And when we talk about the atom, they, he, he was named atom because he was the result of a creative being. And as atom, we have the power of the spoken word. That's what the atom is. When you look at John and one, it says there's nothing that exists that didn't come forth except there was a word spoken. So those are the three, the three that make up the first trinity. I know sometimes people say Asar, Aset, and Haru. Now, Asar, Aset, and Haru do make up another trinity, and that trinity represents more of the physical world, the world of matter. This trinity represents the world of the spirit, the invisible, the trinity of the Asar, which represents the divine masculine or divine masculine and feminine in a fit in a in a in a male container then you have uh, a set which is a divine masculine and divine feminine in a female container okay and then you have their son Haru which is the child in a uh, as a child it has um represents the divine masculine and divine feminine of the or of, of the the child of the mother and the father so that's the first trinity and in the in an african sense the first trinity represents family it doesn't just represent asar or and haru but it represents the centrality of family how you need the divine masculine you need the divine feminine you need the masculine you need the the, the feminine in order to produce. And so that's a whole nother conversation for those individuals who are um, living alternative lifestyles. Sometimes if you, you have to understand why the comedic sciences presents it in its truest form. You know, so it takes a man, a male man and a female man in order to produce a male and a male, and I'm not, there's no judgments here, but I'm just making an observation. A male and a male, or a female and a female, cannot produce the Haru, cannot produce the child. And that's critical to the African mindset of life. So, no judgments. I'm just sharing with you um, concepts. So, those are, those are the first three trinities. That's the, the first trinity that you are have to be aware of. Um, please spell the three names of the trinity. Thank you. So the first name, these names here that you see on the screen, um, the one to the left is Nun and Nunet is N-U-N, is the masculine energy. N-U-N-E-T is the feminine energy. Now, you will find these spelled differently. Sometimes it may be spelled N-U-N-N. -N -N. Sometimes it'll be spelled N-U. Guess what? Where do we get our word new from? N-E-W is really a representation of N-U. Now, the other thing I didn't mention here, you see these three images here. Um, it represents water, and that's where you get the new from. Um, and the age of a, was the beginning started with this inside of this age, the moving of the waters. Pata is P-T-A-H, okay? And then Atum is A-T-U-M. You may see it as A-T-E-M. You may see it as A-T-O-M. Good. And then Os Osar, A-U-S-A-R or A-S-R, also known as Osiris. That's the Greek rendition of it. The Auset, A-U-S-E-T, also A-S-T. The Greek rendition is Isis, I-S-I-S. -I That's the Greek. And then Haru, H-E-R-U. And it also has a Greek rendition, which is Horus. And that's where we get the word horizon from. Okay, good. 
eight aspects. So the characteristics. So the three, the Trinity produces the the evolution as a result of the Trinity, the original Trinity. Then it gives birth to these eight aspects or eight characteristics. Um, here is an image of this is an image of Ptah, and as you might know, who does that look like? It looks like the Oscar. The Ptah looks like the Oscar, which is interesting. The the Ptah is the creative, the energy of the creative force. And the, when we first looked at movies, movies had no, they were silent movies. Ptah is silent, and Ptah then forms a tomb who is the voice. And so when we have our movies, a metaphysical, when we look at the, um, the Oscar, is saying more than most people are aware of. Life is filled with um, metaphors. It's filled with um, things that are not so obvious. Um, so many people are walking with blinded eyes. So we, next, we're going to look at the eight aspects or characteristics of um, source or, or of, of God. And so the, the first one we want to look at is Nun and Nunet. Okay. Um, so you look at this image. Again, this is two in one. You see a, a male depicted by the beard. And if you look closely at the picture, you'll see there's a, a, a breast there. So that's representing two energies, divine masculine and divine feminine. So if we look at the term God, what you say is God is in everything. So this comedic principle of nun and nunet is in everything, behind everything. So the nun, so, so I'm just going to help you understand a little bit about each one of them. The nun is the male. It's important to note that the nun is the same nun from the essence I spoke to early in the Trinity. Before the beginning began, none was nameless. However, once named, none took on the physical form of matter, no water. None was everything and, and all lived through none. None was the original and ancient place of beginnings. He, none, was matter of the cosmic fact. None represents the moisture of the rain, the wetness of all the rivers, the oceans of water. So that's none. Its cohort is Nunet, the female, was the counter heaven. She was where the superclusters, clusters, galaxies first appeared, the stars commenced to shine, the air began to breathe. Nunet permitted the sky to be. When you read the book of Genesis, it's talking about all this, but it's using words that veil this. Okay, so that's the first um, pair. The second pair that we that we want want to look at is the who and the het, the ha and who het. Okay, so because nobody really knows the true pronunciation of these words, um, we. We, we are learning them more intuitively um, by understanding sounds and make the things they depict. So, but H is the H-U-H, was the male infinite, it was, was infinity. It was countless, limitless, without boundaries, and sure to endure forever and ever. So that's the aspect of God where we say God is um, omnipotent. God is, um, you know, he's is countless limitless it can't be measured the the comedic um characteristic that said that was huh and then you have her hat the female was destined means was destined to to limit and to, to be the boundaries for everything and all things will come to be in the cosmic universe she could be counted measured and numbered that's the measurable god is both immeasurable and measurable. God is finite and infinite. In us, we are finite. Source is infinite. So you get them so that those that's the next two, the next pair. 
And then, now, the, the next pair we want to look at, and these are the images that I could find to depict it. Um, here in this image, the, the snake head and the frog head is um, this how you depict who's who. The, the female is Kuket, and the male is Kut or Kuk. Um, so the male was the unknown, the ignorant. So, so even the term unknown, ignorant, many times when people say you're ignorant, what it really is meaning that you don't know. So this, the male represents what was unknown, the ignorant. He was the source from which all light drew her strength. Cook was the sunless shadows of the dark unknown nights. Coquette, the female, brought the glowing intelligence of the light of day into existence. From her perspective, the fiery rays of knowledge was created. So they worked together in creating what the bringing to light um, that was, was hidden in darkness. Now we have uh, the, the next two and the final two, which, are make, which makes up the eight, is Amenet and Amen. Um, Amen, the male, was the concealed one. That's why when you ask your preacher, he's going to say the hidden one, which is true. But your preacher don't tell you that the, so that's the um, divine masculine energy of the spirit. But there is all the so a defined feminine. So the African understood the duality, but yet the oneness of being. We understand duality and we separate and we live inside of one thing. But they harmonized, they had the, the balance of the two. So when we look at Amen, represents the concealed one, invisible to the eye. He was named by Atum. Atum. The Atum, which was this, the, the spirit of the spoken word, which created everything, named him Amen. Amen was the concealed one, invisible to the eye. He was named by Atum to remain unseen, unheard, untouchable, without smell or taste, but forever present. He is a spirit of science. Uh, so all of these are aspects of source. So the Amen. And the Amenet, Amenet, the female, was the revealed one, the one you could see, who could be seen by the eye through all through her all-seeing eye. You know, we talk about the all-seeing eye. The cosmic universe thinks, sees, hears, touches, smells, and tastes. It is through Amenet that the human spirituality experienced her invisible mate, Amen. She is the science of spirit. These are the four pairs that make up the eight aspects of, of what we would say the holy, the first holy trinity or what we would say of God. So the one thing about the Memphite theology is it is really science-based. It goes deeper than this. What I wanna introduce to you tonight is the, the, the fact that we are still inside of the comedic science of Christianity through Christianity, but it has been so veiled that we miss the real lessons and the, uh, the power that comes from understanding these essence. The commissions or the Nile Valley civilization didn't worship these things as in bow down and worship them, but they understood them. And that's where we have to get to the place of a place of understanding them. So the Ankh, and we're right at the backside of this hour, but I want to show you something. Most of us know this as the original cross. Um, many people know that it represents this oval at the top that has a small closure that opens, is, represents the womb, okay? The, the place of the, the fertility, the piece that, the long piece that goes down, which is, can be seen as a Tekken or an obelisk um, is the penis. And then you see the, the, the stretch forth, the horizon from east to west. So this represents life, but it has more of a meaning too. They would wear these on their both arms and it, to keep them on your arm, 
head, you, you, you know, you, if you're walking, you are mindful that you have the onk on to keep balance. But there's another reason and I want to show you that tonight. Now, I just share with you the eight um, or the four divine pairs or the eight characteristics of source. And we're going to see how they equate to the what do we call this thing? We call it a ankh. The A in ankh means amen, amenet. The N in ankh means represents noon and nunet. The K in ankh represent cook and kuket. The H in ankh represents ha and huket. I think they call this an acrostic. Uh, um, these four letters make up the ankh, but is hidden to most people. It represents the eight aspects of the creator, the eight aspects of you. So tonight we covered, you were introduced to cosmology. You were introduced to the three creation stories that you can go and begin to explore. Um, you also in that, Many times the three creation stories are intertwined, which cause confusion when you read some things. Um, we saw the first Trinity concept. Um, I talked about the eight aspects or the characteristics of the creator. And those eight aspects are four pairs, which is um, we're reminded of as we wear the ankh or carry the ankh. Now, I recommend these two books, if you're just starting out, if you've been on a journey, The Spirituality Before Religions by Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kameen um, is book been out maybe a couple, I think I bought it two years ago, a year ago, it's hot on the market, great book. I encourage you to even start with that before you start reading a lot of other things. Then Stolen Legacy is a book that I recommend that any, every teacher, anybody who is in front of children um, need to read this. Um, Stolen uh, Legacy talks about the Greek philosophy, which is stolen from the Egyptian philosophy. Not only is Greek philosophy stolen from the Egyptian philosophy, but the Christian religion is stolen from the comedic spiritual sciences. Good book. I, I encourage you to get both of those books. Now, about to wrap it up, but before we wrap it up, I always like to give you the opportunity. I'm not going to harp on it. I'm closing it, but I'm saying that we, we have to learn to operate in the law of circulation. If this teaching has been a blessing to you um, and you find value in it, consider sowing a seed. Now, you may say, I don't have anything to sow. Everybody has something to sow because the universe is a, a, an abundant place. The receive, we invest, invest in ourselves, like being here tonight is an investment in your time here and giving of what we have, circulating it within the Black community. And this is what I call the law of circulation within our communities. If we did this, our communities would be much stronger, much more powerful, powerful more resilient, and we'll be back at the place where we are self-sustaining. So there's the ways to give. You can go to the website, Oasis Spiritual Center. Uh, you can text to give. Uh, I don't really uh, make it a big issue, but those who desire to give, there is a way to give. And I want to thank you. Giving is a sacred act of your acknowledgement of someone else's value in your life. So there you have it. That's tonight's class, Comedic Genesis of Christianity. Let me pop back up on the screen here. And those of you who need to take off, you can take off because the class is officially over. Um, but I want to um, just entertain if there are some questions uh, or some things that I can address, I will do that. Um, so this is the green room, the backside. Uh, for those who have popped off, uh, we can have a little conversation here. Uh, we're right at 8.56. Wow, now 9.56 on the East Coast, um, 7.56. Uh, 656 on the um, West Coast. All right, um, let me see here. Can you spell? I get. I answer that. Good evening. I'm okay. Ordering it tomorrow. Great, Tawanda. You will find. Make sure you get both of those books. Uh, wow, this is really good stuff. Thanks for the clarification. Can I spelled it? Please spell the three names. I did that. Uh, okay, so you have 
two sets of trinities that you, three sets of trinities. In the Christian Bible, in the Torah, um, it says um, the Father, the Son, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, the Trinity, that they, that's the Trinity of the, uh, given by way of the, the Western civilization. The Kemetic Trinity, Trinity, the first Trinity is the, 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 the Nun, and then it has the Ptah and Atum. And then they have for, a formed Trinity, which is the, in the natural, which represents natural man, Asar, Aset, and Haru. Now, all of us should be ascribing, every woman should be ascribing to Aset. Every man ascribes to be um, Asar. And, and, and they, the divine woman and the divine man should produce Haru, a, a, a child. And it says uh, a son, but we know the word son is just like the word him. It doesn't mean male or female but it represents the product of two divine beings. And we're gonna get back to that one day. Awesome. All right, um, I don't see any questions, um, which I, I can appreciate that. Um, I was just wanna make sure I covered all the bases and I don't wanna leave anyone hanging out there tonight. I know this was heavy, um, but guess what? Uh, if you really want to have a true spirituality that breaks free from the, the um, the cloak of religion, you begin, you're going to have to begin to uh, dive into some of this stuff, because if you're trying to interpret the Bible literally um, without understanding the comedic influence, why did Jesus go to Egypt? Why did, why did um, Moses come out of Egypt? You know, and then he says uh, all roads, the, the, the scripture says all roads in, in, in the last day are going to lead to Egypt. Come on now. That's all I have. Again, I hope something has been said that is uplifting, encouraging, and clarifying.